once again with its fifth edition with a core belief that health is everyone's responsibility. Showcasing their commitment towards the cause, the venue was purified by Pure Air partner Philips Air Purifier. There is a lot of awareness and consciousness about the health. If, if you look at the trends that are visible in, in, in the country, if you look at how seriously we have started take, taking our own health, we know that you know we can't take it for granted. The type of lifestyle that we have, we really need to invest in the health bit of it. And I think as a society, we need to invest more in prevention and that will help us lead a very healthy life. The forum brought together decision makers, community leaders, innovators and various stakeholders to address the opportunities and challenges in the healthcare sector in the country. Right now the pattern of disease is changing. Uh, people are getting uh, traditional communicable diseases but at the same time non-communicable diseases are also increasing like what they call usually lifestyle diseases. After the lamp lighting ceremony, the inaugural session was flagged off by Kamal Narayan Homer, co-founder India Health and Wellness Summit, where he stressed on prevention before cure. I welcome you all on this milestone occasion of 5th India Health and Wellness Summit. It's been an incredible journey so far of thinking and working towards creating an impactful advocacy for better health for all. And we believe that living longer cannot be possible again until we fix the basic determinants of health. While we are seeing unprecedented efforts from the government to bring half of our population under the health coverage, it is extremely alarming that we are not able to prevent more people from falling sick. I hope the good intention of our government, industry and all other stakeholders will lead to a more concentrated movement to build a healthy India and that prioritize prevention before cure. After setting the tone for the event, next on agenda was to enlighten the audience about the government's most sought-after initiative, the Pradhan Mantri Jan Aroge Yojana. Dr. Hindu Bhushan, CEO Ayushman Bharat, spoke about the initiative and explained how this can be a game-changer. Let me focus on one issue. Uh, that when we talk about Ayushman Bharat, Pradhan Mantri Jan Aroge Yojana, people call it, it's a game changer. The question is how? We believe that there are at least four reasons why this scheme is going to change the picture of health sector for time to come. One, about the scale. Uh, Honorable Prime Minister says that we are going to cover more than 500 million people, which is equal to the population of uh, Canada, US, Mexico put together and more. Second reason is that this is the first time that in such a way, in such a manner, we are focusing on demand side financing. In this scheme, we are financing only when the poor people or poorest 40% or 50% people have used services. So it's uh, uh, putting the whole system on its head, financing only when we have achieved the outcome. Third reason is that we are getting into a stage of collective bargaining. We can be uh, negotiating with the, not only providers, but also with the manufacturers of uh, devices, suppliers of medicine, to provide more reasonable uh, prices and quality of services. And fourth and final reason is that this is a scheme where we have a meaningful engagement with the private sector. And that gives us leverage and also a uh, way to go forward together with private sector. Focusing on the topic of mental health and stress management, Dr. Prakriti Podar, Managing Director Podar Wellness, explained how to deal with the challenges of mental health and stress. The challenge today is the fact that we don't understand mental health. We do not understand that every disease that we go through in life converts into a disease in our body. What starts in the mind converts into a disease in the body. You have people who go through life feeling unloved, feeling like they have nobody to talk to, and they probably have built their irrational thoughts around that feeling. This 
comes back to them and it again creates disharmony in their life no matter what happens if you don't heal the inside your outsides cannot get healed we have even at podar wellness we we've decided okay let's talk about stress in fact this year we've taken a mandate to make at least mumbai stress free we've created a 200 minute package where people can overcome stress by talking to a therapist or a counselor at our center i think india fundamentally has something which is very rich and that is called ayurveda now why is it ayurveda is rich because ayurveda is not about just giving medicine ayurveda is a science that in your kitchen how can you pick up things which will help you so ayurveda is basically this unique science of medicine in your kitchen Dr. Randeep Guleria, director at AIMS, gave us a glimpse into the healthcare challenges in India and the need to work in tandem towards improving it. The paradox that we have in India is that the fact that we have a country where we have people coming from all over the world, especially if it's Africa, Europe, and Southeast Asia for medical treatment here. Yet we have this huge issue of not being able to provide adequate health care to a large majority of our own population and there is this huge difference in the terms of equity as far as health care is concerned and therefore i think there is a need for us to look at solutions which can really reach out to areas where health care is lacking and in my mind we have now an opportunity where we can really do this quickly we can leap prob to a new health care paradigm if we look at how things have happened in other sectors Dr P S Ajay Kumar chairman and CEO HCG was the next special guest who spoke on the issue of value based healthcare for everyone We always talk about cost 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 without measuring the outcomes So what is the cost of low cost have we ever sit back and analyzed it India today really provides 83 dollars per capita So what we are expecting is hey I'll give I'll spend 83 dollars but I want the same outcome as United States spending 9400 dollars or UK spending 5000 dollars give me the same outcome that is what the system demands so this is what healthcare spending 68% is private 37% and how when combining the two creating a universal healthcare where everybody like for example i am a medicare recipient of us what that does mean when i was young i paid tax medicare tax to the system and at that time elderly people got benefit out of it free care for anyone today i can walk into any hospital in us get a free care because i contributed why not a system based on their job description i know very few people pay tax in the country 2.5% but it cannot be tax based but can be based on job other description where everyone contributes to the system a huge base is made with 60 70% of youths we don't expect them to get sick so they will be contributing to the elderly and to the sick and the cycle can be done why not this model why do we have to have inferior superior treatments bring uniformity of the treatment so everybody can get the same outcome The pillars of preventive health are marred with challenges world over. The next session talked about the importance of good food, good air and clean water. The panel discussion also touched upon the challenge of indoor and outdoor pollution in India. If you see the data it has got two important issues. One is the death part. So we know that more than 1.2 million deaths are accounted to air pollution and out of that roughly point uh 50% death is attributed to household air pollution this is all happening in poor section of the society the second important issue is the loss of the economic productivity of the population of this country assuming that the per capita income is 1600 dollar you can well imagine the kind of economic loss we are having because of the household air pollution it is more than 60 billion dollar annual so this is a very important issue there is an urgency also not only from the part of the government also government is taking some steps but i am not claiming that this is all happening in perfect sense but this is collective responsibility of all of us to think and do something to mitigate this issue coming from 
uh, the social sector especially is Sankal, representing Sankal Tharu, uh, which is very much instrumental in planting trees. So um, our focus has been um, uh, creating green lungs uh, for the cities as well as planting various green patches across the country from Ladakh to Tamil Nadu, across 16 states we are operational. Concept like urban forests or um, sensitizing residents about planting trees which have better canopies because it's not only about absorbing uh, carbon dioxide, it's also trapping particulates on, uh, you know, we need a media for that and trees in fact act as a source of trapping those particulates. So we need to sensitize residents who can plant those kind of trees which help in purifying uh, definitely outdoor air as well as, um, you know, we need green lungs for those cities in adjacent areas. Health is such an issue that you're bothered about it only when you're unwell. But the care has to be taken right before, before you fall ill or if there's a chance of falling ill. In, in, in our field, the work that we do is all about preventive uh, management actually through the government systems. Increasing expectations from healthcare facilities while swinging trust on institutional care providers is the latest of the worries grappling the Indian healthcare industry. The next topic for the panel discussion was resolving the challenges of dwindling faith on institutional care. To my mind, there is a lot of trust deficit between the healthcare providers and the people seeking healthcare. Uh, India is a vast country. The the, the haves and have-nots, the, the divide is huge and the have-nots are basically just about surviving and the haves have, you know, hell of a lot of resources at their command. So, even for providers like us, like Fortis or any of the other, you know, private healthcare uh, corporate chains that are there in our country today, it's a very delicate balance because at the end of the day, infrastructure and the machinery and all the technology costs one hell of a lot. For you to get the right medical talent and to have comprehensive programs takes a lot of cost, takes a lot of effort, takes a lot of nurturing to kind of incubate it. So therefore, to make it viable and to make it, you know, to have something to plow back and to improve upon it, there is always this dilemma about pricing and that is, I think, the, the primary reason where the trust deficit does come in. So a very, very big term, two words but big, trust deficit. How do you see that being addressed from the provider side? What happens is when a patient comes to a hospital or to a clinician, patient has no clue. The knowledge is in the, with the clinician, knowledge is with the uh, treating person, so he has to, he has to trust. And now with the, you know, there is a joke that everybody comes to a doctor for a second opinion. Google has already told him what is wrong with him. The other thing is our clinicians are also very, very scared now. The hospitals are very scared because if you do something, the same patient who trusts you today and comes for the treatment will file a suit against you and all your, you know, you will be roaming around the courts. So you have to be very, very careful. So I think these are real issues which are there in the segment. Innovations in pharmaceutical and the diagnostics industry for better health was the next big topic of discussion where panelists shared insights on how innovation in healthcare should drive India's growth story. We had many success stories in past and uh, if you're going to talk about the pharmaceutical product which is manufactured by India is supplied to more than 200 countries which is itself is self speaking that where the research base for the pharmaceutical product is available in India at the affordable price. Definitely we are uh, the leader for the off patent drugs not the innovator as of now to much of the drugs but our government is uh, very serious to take this front forward so that the innovation also can be promoted to a great extent with respect to the new molecule. And uh, uh, considering all those aspects, U.S. had opened, United States has opened their FDA office in India. So what else we can speak about the pharmaceutical for the off-patent drug? We are the leader. We have also invested from day one, we've invested behind innovation. Uh, we have a very specialized portfolio which I would say today in the world very few labs can, can do. Um, 
my challenges are that uh, the amount of effort it is required for a lab is uh, is insane today i have a tb test which is i can claim it's by far the best in the country that exist i compete with a test which is approved by who i don't have a who kind of a body in india where i can go and say look approve my test test me out and you do 1000 patients with my method and see whether you're getting better results than than you are otherwise getting from a who body Technology enabled healthcare services are transforming the way healthcare delivery is experienced but how effective and scalable are these technology driven healthcare services was the question that our next set of panelists try to answer When I moved back to India around 6 years back one of my internal uh, studies what I did was that India needed around more than 5000 linear accelerators if i just takes the who standards i uh, we are operating now out of 18 different uh, cities of india so in in last 6 years you know we have been able to move uh, move out to uh, cities as small as nanded hisar was my first project you know when i put it uh, up over there so you can imagine the uh, the vast uh, difference which was there from pakistan border to delhi there was not a single linear accelerator in a distance of almost 700 kilometers mr kandaria you've gone very light on the technology part of it and you're still saying that quality care needs to be made at the village level our goal in life the three major goals in life all of them relate to changing consumer behavior we consider ourselves to be lucky and successful if we can move the patients from going to the village quack and coming into institutional health care if they come within institutional healthcare they will if there is cancer they will eventually move here so our goal is to do that our second goal is to get every patient treatment close to where he lives that's the privilege that you and i have the villagers don't have that privilege third of all they deserve the same quality of uh, service that we get if they cannot afford it they cannot afford it we have to find other ways to fund it somebody who is thinking about nutrition all the while and we know that a lot of nutritional disorders get into the metabolic syndromes or even contribute to our cancers how do you even begin to address that issue i think personally that uh, telemedicine and telenutrition is the way forward for india we don't have a choice with point of care devices at the other end uh, in our company what we have done is all our nutritionists would connect to our patients whether they are in delhi bombay meerut or any town in the country as long as they had a mobile phone we could talk to them we could send them the diet plans second thing is we also realized that while people are willing to pay for weight management there are many other diseases which people have but they will not pay for so we started giving in our way the cap free diet plans for diabetes for cholesterol for polycystic ovary polycystic ovary is a very big condition in india amongst women which is metabolic disorder so what i feel is that education through digital technology can go free because it doesn't cost us that much you're working with things that do not require a tele part of it it's actually on your wrist or somewhere on your body tell us will these devices actually help us meet either an early diagnosis or a, a behavior change that pushes people to seeking care earlier than later actually that's what we derive behavior change right device to be honest is a hook device is a mean to capture the data so if you look at it in the next 5 years all of us with the means of devices and the data which is generating each one of in this room will be probably generating 1 terabyte data of health so what the only way a country like india or as a globe we can survive today is preventive health care the challenge is i won't say the knowledge right the everyone knows what's healthy what's unhealthy i should not be having a fried food i should not be having too much of soda or sugar is the motivation majority of the uh, population in india is between age of like 20 to 40 they are youngster so what uh, right now people should be very health conscious by uh, by going to gyms basically that's what we recommend to our customers okay and that is where uh, they will uh, they will be fit more fitter in india next in line was a leadership discussion based on health communications how the right messaging can make the right impact 
our fundamental belief is in eating. You know, we believe that we are together, we must eat, and uh, we're not a starving nation. We are not anymore. In fact, I'm talking about families that have ample food, but they really enhance uh, their good times with bad food. So, I mean, let's start with the beginning, you know, where you are talking about food and healthcare. It is very, very important that what kind of life you are living, if you are living and uh, just running mindlessly, it is not taking us anywhere. If you are focused too much on only money, that also will not take us anywhere. So we have to do a balancing in our own life. And living as per the Sobhav. Sobhav se Swadharma. The event culminated into a gala award ceremony, an evening that celebrated and honored the best in health and wellness. The first category was health supporting campaign. And the winner was Ditol, Swach Banega, India. We are absolutely thrilled to receive the award simply because Detol Banega Swatch India is an initiative that we are very, very proud of. So this is where an initiative where we are trying to drive behavioral change towards greater and better sanitation of the country. And this is the fifth year that we are running the program and this is an initiative that we are very, very proud of because it is making a small, marginal but very important change in the country. The second category was Mental Health Leader and the winner was Dr. Prakriti Potar, Managing Director, Potar Wellness. The winner under the special category of Public Health Initiative was Department of Health and Family Welfare, Government of NCT of Delhi. The next award for health skilling brand, silver category, went to Tech Mahindra. Under the category of health skilling brand, gold category, the winner was Public Health Foundation of India. In the category health innovation, silver, the award was given to Wish. Next in line was Preventive Care Brand, Gold Category, and the winner was Apollo Hospital Enterprise. In the Preventive Care Brand, Silver Category, the award was given to Goki. The next category was Public Health Initiative, Silver, and the winner was American India Foundation. In the Public Health Initiative Gold category, the honor was bagged by Fine. Healthcare delivery brand Silver category was awarded to Nanavati Super Specialty Hospital. The next award for the Health Access brand Gold category was given to Paridyam Healthcare, Grameen Healthcare. For the Women Health Brand Gold category, the unanimous winner was Fortis La Femme. The next award was for Mental Health Brand Gold category, and the winner was Leon Bat. The Health Workplace Brand Gold category, Hero Motor Corp back the honor. Health Financing Brand Silver category was the next category, and the winner was Max Bupa Health Insurance. The next award for Reproductive and Sexual Health Silver category went to Narayana Health. Finally, in the Health Awareness Campaign Gold category, the winner was Aditya Birla Health Insurance. The 
fifth edition of the India Health and Wellness Summit and Awards successfully played the role of a catalyst and deliberated upon the possible answers to the growing challenges faced by the billion plus population of our country towards leading a healthy life.